Hi, my name is Jerry Kraft, and I am a resident of NOAA, Connecticut, where I've lived for about 25 years. It's been great. So I am the author and illustrator of the middle grade graphic novel, New Kid, which was published by HarperCollins in 2019. So it's about a year and a half old, which has been, it's been a fantastic year. Um, it is the first graphic novel ever to win the Kirkus Award and the John W. Newberry Medal. And it's also the recipient of the 2020 um, Coretta Scott King Author Award. So one of the best things about this for me personally is that it is kind of the mixture between my life and the lives of my two sons. So I'm the one who grew up in the Washington Heights section of New York City. I wanted to be an artist. My parents did not want me to be an artist because they thought I would never make a living as an artist. Um, so instead of going to the art school of my dreams, they sent me to a school in the Riverdale section of the Bronx, which is known for its academics. And that school is the Fieldston School. In New Kid, it's called Riverdale Academy Day School. Um, as I got older and had kids, uh, I sent my kids to a private school in Connecticut. So kind of a combination of what they went through and me seeing as an adult, as their dad, and also me as a kid going to Fieldston for four years. So it is, it's a very close and personal um, story. So that's what's been absolutely amazing for me. So I think... The thing that inspired me to write New Kid the most, you know, um, there's two things. One is I was not a reader as a kid. I read only comic books. Uh, I was not a book reader, I should say, because comic books are real reading. Didn't really have graphic novels. Um, and I was kind of a reluctant reader, you know, by teacher's terms. And... I always wanted to do a book that I wish I had when I was a kid. As I became a dad and bedtime stories were a nightly ritual for my boys, um, I realized that I really didn't see a whole lot of books that just showed kids like them as just being regular kids, kids who eat ice cream and go bike riding and, you know, go for walks in the park. Um, a lot of books when I was growing up, and to a large degree now, when they have African-American protagonists are about really important, heavy issues such as slavery, civil rights, or police brutality. And those are important stories, but I also think it's equally important to have Diary of a Wimpy Kid or Dog Man or Smile or Drama or something like that where the kids are just regular kids. And that was really when I said, I just want to do a story like New Kid about a 12-year-old African-American boy. He has a mom and a dad, and he has friends around his block. Uh, spoiler alert, nothing bad happens to anybody, you know. Uh, <clears throat> and it's just a matter of day by day, just a little thing, some microaggressions and things like that. But all in all, it's a book that you will laugh at laugh with the characters, get to know them, and hopefully feel really good. So the theme of um, National Book Fest, first of all, I want to say that in 2014, I went to the National Book Fest for the first time. I had illustrated a book for Scholastic called The Zero Degree Zombie Zone. I went with my editor, uh, my editor, Andrew Pinckney, and the author, Patrick Henry Bass, and was completely blown away. That was the first event I'd ever been to where my mouth literally dropped. I remember meeting Raina Telgemeier for the first time, who I was a big fan of, uh, Jean Luen Yang, who um, did American Born Chinese, and I got to hear him do a keynote. It's absolutely amazing. And I have always, always, always wanted to go back. So to come back and being able to talk like this, um, and to actually be asked about the National Book Festival is absolutely amazing. That's kind of one of my bucket lists. So ingenuity, specifically American ingenuity. Um, you know, a lot of the books that I have created over the years present the characters with a problem, and they like to use their mind to figure things out. So it's not violence or aggression or whatever. It is coming up with new ways to do things. So in the case of New Kids specifically, 
um, Jordan is going to this new world in Riverdale in this private school where it's predominantly wealthy kids, predominantly white kids. And just the ingenuity of him going back and forth between one world to the other, from Washington Heights to Riverdale. Um, code switching on the bus, you know, using his creativity to create comic strips as kind of a diary. Um, you know, and a lot of things like that, I just feel, um, you know, and even over the past few months of talking to teachers and librarians, how are they engaging with their students, how are they keeping them reading during the summer, you know, things like Zoom, which a year ago people didn't even know about. Uh, book fest, I've done like live drawing demonstrations. Um, and some kids have been more engaged than other than ever before. And I think that that is really um, a, you know, a thumbs up to wonderful teachers, librarians, book clubs who are really putting their kids first. So it, it's always an honor for me to be able to participate in something like this. So in 2014, I remember going to the Library of Congress for the first time. And it was absolutely amazing. Um, I also have self-published. I self-published my first book way back in 1997. So a lot of people are like, oh, here, who's this new guy, Jerry Craft? Did he just like, you know, just pop down all of a sudden and, um, you know, now all of a sudden we know about him. But I have published um, close to about 30 books and illustrated. And, you know, I've always had to send the copies to the Library of Congress. So it's always like this, like amazing, magical place, like, wow, the Library of Congress, you know, someplace like Narnia or, you know, something like that. And um, so it's really was a treat to go there and see it in person. As far as libraries themselves, it has been very interesting because when I was a kid in Washington Heights, there's a library literally right around the corner, which was never open. Uh, the few times when it was open, you know, it was very quiet and everyone, shh. And it wasn't a place of life and energy. It was like, you know, uh, almost going to get some kind of ancient scroll that you would use or something like that. Um, I went back there last year and I cannot believe like the kids on computers and doing research and colors and lights and completely different place. Uh, I've really enjoyed traveling the country, talking to amazing librarians, uh, people that I never had as a kid, because I know that um, a lot of times teachers will say that they gave a kid new kid or smile or American born Chinese or something like that. Hey kiddo. And it's the first graphic novel that they've read or even for African-American kids like myself who would have loved to have Kwame Alexander or Jason Reynolds or Renee Watson or Eric Velasquez, Elizabeth Acevedo. And they take these books and they match them up with these kids and they make them readers. And that's something that I never had as a kid. So I have even more respect now as an adult for libraries and librarians, especially here in my hometown in Norwalk and also some of the closer ones, such as the Darien Library and the Westport Library uh, and the Schomburg Research Center um, in Harlem. Uh, it's really amazing. And I'm glad that I did get to do it as an adult, even though I did not get to experience that uh, camaraderie and bond as a kid. But better late than never. In New Kid, and I'm just so happy to actually get copies to have these medals on. Um, so, one of the things that I knew when I was creating New Kid and the main character, the protagonist, Jordan Banks, is that a book that deals so much with race and class that if I wasn't careful, it could be seen as maybe an angry book, you know, something that um, was more divisive and it was seen as complaining or something like that. So I think that um, I knew that I had to counteract that by having characters that were very engaging. Um, I started with a very strong family bond between Jordan and his dad and Jordan and his mom, and then the three of them as a unit. And I probably get more letters about that family unit and how much the moms all across the country relate to the mom in the book than I do about just about anything else. 
um, also having like a grandfather. Um, but I also knew that I had to be funny. Um, one, I don't know of a lot of books that feature African American protagonists that are humorous. A lot of them, the characters are dealing with the weight of the world, you know. Um, every day is just like a turmoil and things like that. And, you know, I've always thought that at any given moment, one of the top comedians in the country is always African American, whether it's Tiffany Haddish or Kevin Hart, or before that, Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock. But, you know, I always thought that, like myself, me and my friends, we thought we were pretty funny, you know, and these guys had to have been funny as kids. So why don't you see funny African-American kids in books and movies and TV for the most part? So I really wanted to show that the way that Jordan and Drew dealt with a lot of uh, the microaggressions of being kind of an outsider was through humor. You know, if people called them by the wrong names and they call each other by the wrong names. And it's something that me and my friends did when we were going to Fieldston, uh, just using a lot of things. And we laughed through so much. Um, and then to actually look back at those times of like, hey, you know, we had a really good time, you know, even though we were so different. But that came from really the bond. Uh, there were five of us in Fieldston that were just really tight. Um, and we laughed all the time and I'm still friends with them and we still laugh all the time. So using characters like that, Alexander with the hand puppets and, you know, really showing, uh, exaggerating some of the visuals. If Jordan is feeling lonely to literally show him like six inches tall, you know, of how he feels. And those are the things that I think really help to embrace even reluctant readers and teachers and adults alike and their kids uh, to being as successful as, as it is. And I thank each and every one of you for that. So a lot of people ask me, um, you know, they use the word groundbreaking and how do I feel doing a groundbreaking graphic novel? And again, it's really funny because, again, in theory, it shouldn't be groundbreaking, you know, because I'm just having African-American kids like me and my friends growing up, you know, in Washington Heights, we played stickball and football and skellies and rode bikes. So this is the life that I knew. But once again, you really don't see that a lot, um, especially in African-American boys. So it is also groundbreaking in the sense, um, you know, of winning the, I think it's the second book uh, ever to win the Newbery Medal and oh, and I actually have it here. The, I brought it to show you the Newbery Medal and the Credit Scott King Award uh, for the same book, joining Bud Not Buddy, um, one of five African American authors to ever win um, the Newbery Medal. Um, you know, Kwame Alexander was the last to do it. Um, he's an amazing author. Um, so I think when you're talking about why it's groundbreaking, I think it really is something that was, again, shouldn't be different, but by showing the humor, the camaraderie, the family, um, also by putting it in a graphic novel format. And a lot of times with graphic novels, there's still some people that look down at it like, you know, a prose book is like steak, a fine steak, and a graphic novel is like, you know, donut something like that. That's just dessert. But I know, having written prose books, that I put the same amount of work rewriting, 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 the editing process, um, you know, the story arc, the character development that I put in, I put in any book that I've ever done. Um, so I was confident that if given the opportunity, that it would be a book that would resonate with people. Uh, but it really was until coming across my editor, Andrew um, Harwell, Eliopoulos, and Rosemary Bronson at Harper, um, and of course my agent, Judy Hanson, that really believed in me and gave me that opportunity. And it just goes to show what I had always thought, but now um, seems like the world has been able to see it. And I've you know, talked to kids in New Zealand and China and Japan uh, and it's translated into five different languages now. So it's been absolutely amazing. 
um, I would say something that I dreamt about, but I didn't even have dreams this large because growing up as a kid who never thought he would read a 200 page book, be able to actually write a 200 page book and winning awards, literary awards that I never heard of as a kid, I would have to say is even beyond my wildest expectations, but I'm grateful, so grateful for each and every one of them. So the messages, so first the message in New Kid is to just take a little extra time to get to know people. So how to pronounce their name, how to spell their name. If your friend is Chinese, that's not the same as being Korean. That's not the same as being Indonesian. You know, if they're Dominican, that's different than being Puerto Rican. Um, so I really feel that if we take that time to learn about each other, learn about the culture, learn about food, there's other ways going, ew, what is that? Like, hey, let me taste that. Let me look at it. Let me learn. I think that we'll all be better off for it. Uh, my message to aspiring writers and illustrators is I know that whenever I do school visits, I always show homework from seventh grade that I used to draw superheroes on or even comic books that I would make. Because a lot of kids will look at new kid and go, oh, I can't ever do that. I'm like, I can do this either. Like I drew just like you did. But it's a matter of what you want to do with it, how much you practice. And also not having some kids are so hard on themselves that they'll draw like one little line they go oh i messed up and then spend the next 20 minutes erasing you know they will spend more time erasing than they do creating you know sketchbooks that are just half full and then thrown in the garbage because they didn't like it so give yourself a break you know um the same with the writers you know if you get writer's block just go out Go for a walk, ride your bike, you know, things will come to you. You don't have to sit in front of a computer and be like, think, 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 because that puts a lot of pressure even on me. So I go out and I do stuff. I have my phone, I have my sketchbook. And those kind of things really add, um, I think, to the overall, like when I do the dialogue, right? Two ears, one mouth. That way you listen twice as much as you talk. So when I'm out or doing the school, I'm looking at, you know, the shoes, how they wear their pants, do they wear belts, how they're doing their hair, is there colors in their hair, how do they speak, what slang are they using, what music are they listening to? Um, and those are the things that I think that uh, I've put into New Kid um, and the sequel, Class Act, which will be out October 6th of this year, 2020, which is the eighth grade year of... Um, with Jordan, Drew, and Liam, and all the characters from the first New Kid. Uh, but I think those are the things that um, have made people really like New Kid and will have them like Class Act even a little bit more because I think because I'm still practicing and getting better, I think I'm a better artist and writer with doing Class Act than I was even for doing New Kid. So that's a lot. Uh, but again, it is a tremendous honor. Uh, like I said, the National Book Festival is one of the things I had always dreamt about, and it will always be the time when I remember seeing Jean Yang and Raina and people like Kyle Baker and then Jeff Smith and just an amazing, amazing thing. And I really then realized the power of books. And when I left there, I said, I know that this is what I want to dedicate my life to, and I someday want to return um and be able to share more books and more stories and so i hope to be a part of this for years to come so thank you very much